what's the best yeah, for us? Do Should we do six here or three three? Three no, there's only three. Better. Three, because you need space for all the glasses okay. and everything. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. But our favorites are Barolos. Barolo, you drink? Yes. Okay, that's when someone else is paying, we drink. <laughs> <laughs> My issue is also to give you things that are, has got a high quality, yeah. but they are not, they're maybe not really well known, so, yeah. uh, so they, they do not cost the same price and uh, of other ones that are known and so it's not that important. so don't be scared about it okay uh, i think there's like a i think there's a range i mean i think yeah. some people know a lot and people like me don't know anything before i was pro um <laughs> proposing what well, i do a, i do a thing that i call sideways italy wine and food tour that it means that i actually takes wine from three four different regions yeah. From north to south, yeah, that would be great. and and uh, we will finish maybe uh, of course in Piedmont. We will touch Tuscany, but from a different side maybe. And now we will move in the world of mozzarella. This thing you cannot have it outside of the region. The reason for that because mozzarella has got a life of 24 hours. Someone says even 18. Actually, who is really into the mozzarella says that a mozzarella has to be eaten from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the morning. And <laughs> that's his best. They use it instead of the cappuccino or they put it in the cappuccino. Is it I don't know. Milk or cow's milk? No, this is buffalo milk. And when you do like that, you should have the water coming out, okay? If you don't have that, it's not a fresh mozzarella, okay? No. This is so good. It's so, you don't understand. Wow. It's, it's like the perfect amount of salt. <laughs> oh my god. Um, crunchy, chewy, and milky. Oh, yeah, perfect. It'd have to be crunchy the first bite, chewy the second, it should squeeze in your mouth as a fresh milk. Oh my god. Yeah, you get if you don't have high quality milk, you cannot do this. That's, that's the issue. I had some 85 from this Pirulano, one of the best wine I had. And, um, He's a really nasty person, actually. <laughs> and the first rule of wine tasting, in my opinion, is not to trust in a stupid sommelier like me. So that's why, no, it is, it is a joke, but it's not. It means that you have to trust in your palate. This is a Friulano. Friulano means uh, uh, coming from Friuli, northeast of Italy, a region close to the border of Yugoslavia. The grape is called the Tokai. But we cannot call it Tokai anymore from 2009 because the European Commission said that there was a trial between the Hungarian Tokai, that is a sweet wine, yeah. uh, even if the Italian Tokai has got 1,000 years of tradition and the Hungarian Tokai has got 400 years of tradition, but we lost. We always, it goes the we always lose. So was Berlusconi yeah, as a Prime Minister. No. That's <laughs> right. Now, yeah, all, the world is at, all the world has been conquered by the most stupid cow in the world that is actually the Frisona that comes from Holland. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful cow to see but it produces 45 liters of milk every day. It's, it's a milk that's not really rich in fatness and in, in carotenoids. So you cannot make cheese that are, have this consistency. What is interesting in this Parmigiano is the balance between the sweet part and the yeah. salty part. I have a lot of horrible stories about Super Tuscans. Uh, to, uh, I'm not going to tell it now, but anyway, but some of them, yes. So, uh, Don't but, tell me! <laughs> it means that, I mean, most of the things maybe you taste that you have in the United States, but not just in the United States, they, they have a sort of an invented tradition behind, okay? Something that was made for the market, made for the international market. This doesn't mean that these are bad wines, but uh, it's like this doesn't mean that the Indian fast food is bad in New York. Uh, but it's nothing to do with the tradition. So. All the different things of the wine, all the different uh, aromas that the wine has. Why you want to do that? Because 95% of your palate is in your nose. And why you want to smell and spend all this time smelling a wine? First reason because you are a stupid sommelier sometimes, or so uh, you you like to show off and you do this thing and so on. No, because no, but this is a this is a matter sometimes, you know. I, I I've been tasting, I've been doing some wine tasting with some professional sommelier. They were spending hours and uh, let's drink the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Say idiot things like Afghan roses or Russian leather. <laughs> Russia. We need to understand this complexity for one reason because wine is the only fruit juice, fermented fruit juice, that has got a complexity. It can be, uh, you can have pineapple, apricot, spicy, in all in one. In a pineapple fruit juice, you will taste pineapple, and that's it. In an apple fruit juice, you will taste apple. 
That's why we make one with uh, grapes, because grapes is incredible. The skin of the grape has got some specific molecular that they change all the time. And also wine is alive. One year after two years, three years, it changes over time. It depends on the vintage, it depends on the grape you use, it depends on the soil. There are a lot of incredible things that are actually around the complexity of the wine. So approaching to a tasting is not just getting drunk, it's about is about entering in sort of a art, uh, artistic approach to things, aesthetic approach to things. I'm not saying the wine is a piece of art. Someone says that. I do not believe that. We are going too far. But getting into the complexity of wine is like getting into the complexity of a painting, of a, of a book. It's like because most of the time your palate decides that this wine do not like it. And I've seen tasting. Oh, I love this wine, and they don't drink it. The wine is good when you drink. The whole bottle low. Crying, you know, yeah, happy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? Hey. How would spicy? More spicy and yeah, salty yeah, than spicy. citric. If it would be only citric, you would be just on the side of your tongue, but you're feeling getting it here, and yeah, here. but in front of your teeth. This is the opposite of a Napa Valley Chardonnay, okay? Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and all it could be a shocking, but this is the wine, not that. Yeah. With this cheese, should come out more the saltiness of the wine somehow, okay? Why? Well, this one here should come, this cheese here should round the wine, actually, in a better way. I think it's pretty round already now. And, and let's try also with this one here. Parmigiano Leggiano Vacche Rosse, Red Cow. This is the one we opened with Anthony Bourdain, actually. That's incredible. This is Parmesan. Oh, wow. so good! That's amazing. Yes. Oh, that parm? It's not always like this, you know, people yeah, say it's the Parmesan and they don't. I can see there is an ancient culture behind you. you know? <laughs> Moves forward versus moving like in the middle. See, with, it, with that cool. cheese, I... It was strong. It was not strong, but I sort of tasted the alcohol. Sure, the cheese, sure. But with the cheese, it Absolutely. masses the yes. alcohol it taste. It. Yeah. So it was really, really nice. Uh, I agree. The only Italian I usually drink is agave, which I love. So what's the grape that comes in agave? Okay. Uh, agave is a grape that is called the Cortese. Okay. And... Um, and... Uh, not a lot to say about this. So it, all, the, all the wines I drink that Super Tuscan equals Banana Republic. <laughs> uh, it, this is a reserve from 2007. <laughs> No matter what, no matter what, as long as you need to breathe a bit in the glass, so if you can resist, just wait a while before you drink it. This is uh, this is the, it's the same grape of the Montalcino, it's the Sangiovese, but it's a variety that is called the Prognolo Cinchile. We should ask it. So what can you tell us about Montepulciano? Montepulciano is a village. Oh, no. Before to say something about Montepulciano, we need to distinguish, because people most of the time do not know that there is a grape that is called Montepulciano, and then there is a village that is called Montepulciano. Okay. It's Montepulciano. This is Nobile di Montepulciano. So from the village. It's all, one of the oldest traditions of winemaking. Uh, even if it is only 150 years that we, they call it the Nobile, because it was a noble family that thought that his, their wine was actually noble and they started to call it Nobile. But they produce wine for the, in the, it's more than 1,000 years that they produce wine there. Wine in Montalcino is actually 150. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Anyway, we are talking about the best producer of Montepulciano, absolutely. Boscarelli is not just me that says that. Uh, so we are tasting probably the best wine of the area. This is the maximum expression of Sangiovese. Mm. Oh, I have one more question. What is the best vintage for Tuscan wines? It really depends on the... On After 2000. No, it really depends on, on, on the vineyard, uh, on, the, uh, okay. on the winemaker. Uh, someone says 2004. In my opinion, 2004 is a bit too hot, too warm. Okay. It is being overrated. Okay. Most of the time, they mess it up. All the journalists they say this is a great vintage, and then mm. they discover it's not. They were speaking a beautiful 97. All the 97 are dead now, for example. Mm. No, I had so Sasikaya 88. Okay, a few weeks ago, I had Sasikaya 88 and Sasikaya 97. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay, your house, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sasikai 88 and Sasikai 97. Sasikai 88 was much better than 97. Okay. It was younger than 97. The 1998 so, to, to understand a wine that is still a bit compressed, you know, uh, on the nose. Uh, well, on the mouth it could explode, but it's, 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 at the moment it's a bit raw somehow. You need to breathe a bit. This is excellent. What is this called? This called is Nani Coupe. The and guy like, is yeah, incredible. Like the guy is incredible. He knows every th th single plant because he's got 2,000 plants. 
when I was there on the vineyards with him, and he, when he harvested, he decided just to have one, one piece there, one over there. Okay. This is like, yeah. this is, yeah. this is, this is everywhere. It stays, it stays everywhere. It's so nice. One, one. I like it young because it's less tingly in the mouth. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. We see okay. you over there, by the way.